this is a simple combination lock like students have on their lockers and instead of writing all the code in the video I'm just gonna walk through what I have and kind of explain how it works so first we'll start in the animation tab the only good animation I have here is just a copy of a dial on a combination lock then I just have some other things that are scribbled there's an L for left an R for right and then an open one that just says open these should look better but I'm not gonna take the time to make them better right now so the first thing I want to show you is here is the variable dial uh, here's my right and here's my left and you can see that those look like this this actual image is very large so I've scaled it down to a one-fourth or a quarter of its original size and uh, that's kind of the setup so let me scroll down and I'll show you what's happening inside the draw loop uh, so first I have um, if the mouse is pressed over this right one right here uh, I want the dial to rotate two degrees and that looks like this and uh, right here if it's pressed over the left one it's gonna rotate negative two degrees so to go back the other way and I put a watcher down here uh, I'll show you how to do that uh, dial dot rotation so that I can see the rotation happen and know what the actual numbers are as they go around and as you might imagine one complete circle is right about 365 degrees it's pretty close okay so as I started testing this out um, I noticed that it was actually more convenient or it just seemed logical that you would use the right and the left keys so I, I added that kind of as an afterthought uh, right here if the right key is pressed down it turns right and where's my left one here if my left key is pressed down then it turns left so there are actually two ways to control this device okay uh, what else have I skipped over oh yeah I, I didn't mention this little line right here I just actually drew it and I'll scroll down here and show you where I drew the line okay so here's the line that I drew this vertical line right here and then I needed to put this text on the screen and I put it in three different text blocks and I'll show you each one of those here's one of them this is its X position and its Y position and that's where I wrote 10 on the screen and then I kept the Y position of 30 and just scooted the X over for 25 did a little guess and check there to make them spaced out and then my 15 uh, is right here same y value just a different x value so this is the combination that i'm trying to solve on this lock so uh, what i want to do is rotate over to 10 then go in the other direction rotate to 25 and then go back in the right direction to rotate to 15 to unlock so in order to make that happen the first thing i needed to do was to mess with rotating to 10 in the right direction so what I did was rotate it over to 10 and I stopped right there and then at that point you can see that the value of the rotation is 270 so I said if the rotation is greater than 260 and less than 269 I'm not sure that's perfect maybe I should make this less than like 272 that way if they get anywhere near it I'm gonna call it right okay and I made another variable right here at the very top called lock and I set lock to zero to start and I'll explain why in just a second so in the beginning of the program lock is zero so I said if the rotation of the dial is between 266 and 272 so if it's in this area and the lock value is zero then set lock to one so let's reset and you can watch that happen uh, here right now you can see locks value is zero and when I get close to 10 you're gonna see the lock goes up to one okay and now as an added little extra I made that digit turn green when I hit the right spot and I'll show you that's actually down tell you what I'll show you that in a minute because that's a bit complicated uh, but just for now you know that I've reached the first point of my combination so lock equals one 
And now the next thing I need to do is to rotate left to 25. But when I do so, I need to skip the first occurrence of 25. You have to go around an extra time. So when I click left, uh, you can watch down here the rotations. And now here's the first instance of 25, which is not what I want. It's actually the second instance of 25. And when I get near that, you can see that I'm at negative 226. So here, I say if lock equals 1, which I would be after I hit 10. So if lock equals 1, and the rotation's between negative 232 and 220, then I want to set lock equal to 2. You can see that that's occurred here. So now I've hit the second step, and you can see that that number has turned green. I'll show you how to do that in just a second. So my last value on the combination lock is 15. So I need to go right again. So it goes right, left, right. I'm going to go right again over to 15. And you can see I've got if the lock equals 2, which it was when I started, and you're between negative 140 and 134, then lock equals 3. And you can't actually, here, let's go back and do it again, because you can't see that happen if I go too fast. So here's my 10. That one turns green. Lock goes to 1. Then I'm going to skip 25 the first time and catch 25 the second time around. Now, this is the part I want to be more careful on, because I want you to see this rotation value before I hit it. It's probably close enough. I'm at 140, 142, that was close. So as soon as I get into 140, I will have met this criteria of the F, and it will convert to lock 3. But when I do, down here, if lock double equals 3, then make all these changes. So the easiest ones first. I will hide the left and right buttons so that people can't twist it. Uh, I will resize it to make it bigger. Uh, I will rotate it to the original position, so straight up and down. And then I'll change this dial's picture to the word open. So let me scoot over to 15 and you'll see all of these things happening at once. So I've changed the image, I've set my rotation to 1 as you can see, and all this happened because lock equaled 3. So the only thing left to explain is how I'm changing these numbers to a different color one at a time. So let's look at that. Uh, all of these blocks below draw sprites are my numbers. So you'll notice, uh, here let's just do it this way. This first one just sets the text size larger, and then I say, make the text black and write the number 10. Make the text black, that's fill, and write the number 25. Notice I'm skipping the ifs. Make the text black and write the number 15. So that's where it's actually writing them on the screen. But between each one, I'll say, if lock double equals 1, fill green. That means change it to green if I'm on the 1. Uh, change it to green if I'm on the 2, change it to green if I'm on the 3. So you can see these in action. I'll do it one more time and you can see what's going on. Okay, so when I get to 10, lock equals 1. So right here I'm saying change it to black. Now if lock equals 1, and it does, change it to green. Write 10 in green. When I go the other way, we'll activate the second if that you can see there on line 47. There it is. So now it says fill black, but if lock equals 2, and we see that it does, then fill green instead, 25. And then the last one, 15, and you can see that's green because lock now equals 3, so it changes the fill to green, and we hit 15. And that's my combination lock.